Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Daniel Lee, Project Coordinator at Zhejiang Architect. And today, I've got an interesting topic for you. Have you ever looked at an architectural design and thought, that looks cool, but I have no idea what it means? Well, you're in the right place. I'll explain how these drawings work from my perspective as a project coordinator and an architectural designer. And without further ado, let's get started. Architectural drawings are crucial when applying for a building permit. They serve as the foundation for other key plans like structural, electrical, plumbing, mechanical, and sprinkler systems. Without these drawings, engineers cannot start their work because they do not have a clear basis for the layout or dimensions or even what's inside of the building. That's why it's so important for architects or designers to produce accurate and polished drawings before sharing them with other professionals. A single mistake, like a layout change, can cause major disruptions and force everybody to revise their plans. These drawings typically include site plans, floor plans, reflected ceiling plans, elevations, sections, and details. Depending on the project size, the city might also require additional plans. To give you a better idea, let's look at our residential project we worked before, where the construction was just completed a few months ago. Take note, I'll be showing you multiple projects we've handled as examples later on. Here we have the project data. This part includes the lot information, zoning, total floor area for each floor, building height, lot coverage, density, and setbacks. Normally, project data is based on local codes. For example, this project is located in Coquitlam, so you have to check the zoning bylaw regulated in the city of Coquitlam. Always remember that each city has different regulations you need to follow, so it's best to consult with a professional first as they are adept with the codes. The symbol legend is another key section. It explains the symbols used in the drawings. For instance, you'll notice sheet numbers like A101. Here, the A represents the for architectural, and the first one represents a type of sheet. For example, we can set the project data as zero and plans as one and the elevations as two. The last digit indicates the sequence of sheet. For instance, in this drawing from the city of Coquitlam, elevation sheet type is two. Therefore, A200A contains the front and east elevations, while A201A contains the south and west elevations. However, we sometimes use a simpler sheet numbering system for our projects. In this case, we use A000, for the project data page and the general information, then A001 is the next page, which might include area plans, the wall types and schedules, and so on. Basically, we're just numbering the pages. Next, we have the north arrow symbol, which points to where north is oriented. The symbol doesn't always face upwards. It indicates the location of the lot and the direction north is facing. The north arrow can be rotated depending on the orientation of your lot. Then we have grid lines. These are imaginary lines used as reference points in the drawings to help you navigate quickly. Usually in the floor plan, the upper and lower grid symbols use numbers, while the left to right grid symbols use letters. You can also see these grid lines and elevations and sections of the architectural drawings. After that, we have the door number and wall type. Basically, this is just a tag to help you determine what type of door or wall is being used in the floor plan. For example, the doors in the basement floor plan use the tag D02, which is used in both the bathroom and the bedroom. If we look at the other pages that contain the door schedule, you can see the details, such as the width and the height, the handle, its hardware, the finish, and the panel type. Aside from that, you can see what it looks like in the legend. The same goes for the wall type. As you can see on the main floor plan, the exterior wall is tagged E1. If you look at the wall type schedule, you can see the details of the wall. The exterior cladding is a stucco with a backer board, a 40 millimeter water resistant barrier, half inch plywood sheathing, two by six studs placed every 16 inches on center, bat insulation, six mil polyethylene as vapor barrier, and the interior finish of half-inch gypsum wallboard. 
Now we have the exterior elevation and interior elevation. As you can see, both are for elevation purposes, but they have different symbols, though they basically mean the same thing. For example, for the exterior elevation, the top number, 1, is a drawing number, while 201 is a sheet number. The same applies to the interior elevation. The numbers surrounding the circle represent the drawing number, and the number inside the circle, A211, is a sheet number. Also, remember that the arrows show the direction the drawing is facing. Let me give you a sample from one of our residential projects. As you can see, on the exterior of the main floor plan, there's an elevation symbol labeled as number one, located on the sheet number A004. Now, let's head to sheet A004 and look for a drawing numbered 1. Here we are. As you can see, the drawing is numbered 1 and shows north elevation. Then, we have the section. Just like the elevation, a section is also represented by a circle with an arrow, but this time, the section has a line with it. This means that whenever the line goes through, that's where the building is being cut. And the arrow shows the direction of the cut. Let me show you a sample from our project. As you can see in our first floor plan, the section symbol shown on the side of the floor plan is number 3. And located on page A008, let's head to page A008. And as you can see, this is the section labeled number 3 in the building section number 1. Next, we have the detail symbol. This is usually to provide a more detailed and zoomed in version of a specific part of the drawing. The numbering is used just like the elevation and section numbering. Here is a sample from our project showing a zoomed in detail of the roof parapet. Then we have the spot elevation markers. You can see this circle divided into four quadrants, while the opposite sides of each quadrant is shaded black. This shows the elevation. If an arrow is used, it usually indicates that a certain part of the drawing is elevated. For example, in the site plan of the project, the arrow has two labels on it. However, if the circle has a grid line instead of an arrow, this type of symbol can also be seen in the elevation and sections of the drawing. For example, in the north elevation, there is an elevation mark where the highest point is located at the roof ridge at 86.31 meters above sea level. Lastly, we have the revision number and the revision cloud. A revision cloud is a red cloud-shaped object used to highlight areas on the drawings that have been changed based on the previous version. This number tracks which version of the revision was created. For example, you can see that the revision cloud is labeled as 2, and it was created on January 8, 2024. This legend is used throughout the architectural drawings, so keep in mind the definitions of each symbol. Now we've covered the entire symbol legend. Let's head to the consultants list. Every project involves multiple allied professionals handling various aspects of construction. It's important to list their names on your drawings, as this will also be considered for documentation. Then, we have the drawing list. This table contains all the drawings in the file and the respective page numbers. For example, if we go to A003, we can see the main floor plan or the first floor plan. After that, we have the site plan. Site plan showcases the layout based on the land surveyor's survey, along with the building plan of the property. The thick blue broken line in the drawing shows the property line of the lot. Have you noticed the numbers beside those bent lines? Those thin bent lines indicate differences in site elevation from mean sea level, and the numbers show the elevation of those lines. For example, in the lowest left side of the lot, it indicates that 75.28, meaning this corner of the lot is 75.28 meters above sea level. It's essentially the same as the spot elevation markers we discussed earlier in the symbol legend. Lastly, we have the reflected ceiling plans. The reflected ceiling plan shows what you see on your ceiling. Symbols and legends are always indicated somewhere in the drawing. In this sample, RCP plan, the rectangular symbol represents a 2x4 LED light, which has a large coverage area and is perfect for commercial kitchen use. Next, the thinner rectangle represents a linear LED, which is used in areas like the hallways outside of washrooms, offices, and kitchens. And then the circle represents pendant lighting, which is great for areas like dining spaces, so customers can see their food clearly. 
It's also to use warm color light to make the food look more appetizing. Recessed lighting serves the same purpose as pendant lighting, but mixing different types of lighting in one area can make it a little bit dull. Therefore, adding recessed lighting is the best choice. Lastly, we have pendant lighting placed in the washroom. With this information, I hope you have a better understanding of architectural drawings and the rationale behind the designs. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button to support more content like this. And that is it for today and see you in the next one.